Hi friends, host Eric here. I was talking to French people. You may have read in the title. Tonight only we've got a special deal on enlightenment. You can get enlightened tonight. Your path towards enlightenment, the duration of this live stream, and any time that you're watching it, will go three times as fast as usual. So that's pretty important. And for those of you who are looking for enlightenment, well, why get there later? Why not get there sooner? It's a fair question. It's free. It's just it's it's taught. It's part of the deal tonight. Everybody who watches gets their enlightenment process if they're pursuing their enlightenment. For those who are pursuing it, their pursuit is is triple fast for the duration of this live stream as they're watching it. Just something I'm tossing in, just a little something for the viewers, you know. Bonus, a little thank you, you know. Um, how close are you, Stephen Lewis? What belt are you in self-development? Are you a brown belt, a red belt, yellow belt, black belt? Off-grid self-sustainable housing. Get enlightened today. Hey, hippie in disguise. I'm on the same journey you're on, okay? We're both getting triple-time enlightenment right now. Hi, between two worlds. If you're here getting triple time enlightenment, pretty soon you might not be between two worlds anymore. You might just be enlightened. Um, I got to crank up as fast as it can go. I could crank it up a little faster, I suppose, but I don't want to take any chances. That's how you cause uh, spiritual explosions. Uh, Stephen Lewis is susceptible to spiritual explosions. That's pretty well established at this point. Don't metaphysically smoke near Stephen Lewis. Real smoking is fine, but um, yeah, he's a little flammable. So, anyhow, my parents' house went well this evening. Came around, I just got back from there, and she made delicious French food for the evening's meal, coco bain, which is chicken and wine. No, you don't want to get pulled over for that. I hear the uh, Enlightenment police are tough. Yep, Walter Wiseman. You're already a wise man, okay? So I know you're on your way to Enlightenment. Do you feel that happening three times faster? There's kind of a tingle in your elbows. That's a sure sign that you're enlightening right now. What do you think? people refer to when they're talking about enlightenment? That's my question to anybody in the chat there who wants to answer it. I, I have my thoughts about whether enlightenment is meaningful or not, but people obviously are trying to mean something when they say, you know, that guy's enlightened or someday I'm going to be enlightened or whatever it is they say, you know? It's just a label I put over. Actually, I'm just decreasing. Oh. I see. Getting less wise? Well, it doesn't say whether you're increasing or decreasing, decreasing your name. You could be still barely wise. What a nice stream. <laughs> yeah, so nice. Um, okay, so let's see here. I just tried turning speed three times up to get in like nine times faster, but now we're, oh. Unfortunately, I the way I have it set up, if you try that, you could actually cause it a short. And then, you know, it'll be days before your um, enlightenment cycle resets. Because uh, once you, you blow an enlightenment fuse, it takes a while to heal. Enlightenment is development, in my view, spiritual and emotion. This is actually this that this it happens actually with every step. <laughs> well, I mean, I definitely believe in in progress towards something. So that would imply that there's there's some sort of state of being, I guess, or way to live that's preferable to the 
status quo. I'd hate to think at any point that I no longer had areas to improve. And, and I can't even imagine that ever occurring. I'm a very fallible person. You know, it's like I say stupid shit sometimes. I forget to follow through on things. I make mistakes. I fail a lot, you know. And uh, I get my feelings hurt sometimes. And I I fail to account for other feelings sometimes. And, you know, I do all the normal shit that people do, right? Nobody's perfect. That includes me. But I wonder what it is, why there's, there's this population of people who are into, like, learning from guru, teacher, Zen type people, right? What are they getting out of that? Is it, is it just like, well, I like to embody... And if so, why? What exactly is it about embodying spiritual ideas into a person that is especially satisfying for some? Because to me, it would seem that you're immediately getting away from the point of it when you're when you're going, well, that guy's that guy knows how to live, and he can help me know how to live. Um, not that it's, I'm I'm not saying that like. Nobody should go to a shrink or get life coaching or a priest or whatever, or whatever. I'm just saying that it would seem to me that the people who afford the most, like, primacy to their their leaders are kind of like Buddhists almost. I mean, I guess you could say Catholics with their Pope, who's purportedly infallible. But... uh doesn't it seem like the Buddhists sort of worship their their in a way with their like well you're not just a regular guy you're enlightened enlightened I guess it would imply that there's some sort of vision that fails to be activated because of the darkness around one prior to enlightenment. Um, I would notion, I would say, because I don't feel like I'm in darkness at all. I just feel like it's hard to it's hard to, to be a willful self that's also a self that seeks flow and that wants to be in a state of flow a lot of times which is sort of necessarily un, non-willful or non-intentional anyway. Like the most state of flow of shit is stuff when you're not making a decision to do something. You find yourself starting something and then you're, you get into it, it starts to look good, it starts to work well or whatever, and you continue to, to hammer it out. And before you know it, you're completely immersed and it's just like, well, it would seem that, that would be contraindicative of mindfulness. And I don't think, there, most people would agree that being in a state of flow is not a bad thing. Uh, some people might think that it's it's not something to seek necessarily. I'm not sure. But it does seem to be strange that a state of flow would be contraindicative to what would seem to be the whole purpose of, I guess, Eastern thinking on the matters, which is mindfulness. So, not a lot of action in the live stream tonight, but that's okay, because I'm feeling all right. It's Wednesday night, and it's 7 p.m., and pretty soon I'll live stream again. Um, so, let's see what else there is to talk about from the, the day's events or some other notion that's been floating across my consciousness. Well, I've been thinking a lot about the way that that the way that Kim and I interact is revelatory of so much about SI any uh, in particular, but more specifically about what it means for to provide any to uh, ISFJ. And you know, Kim and I had a good conversation today about. 
about the the chicken thing. Kim wants to build a chicken thing. I don't think it's necessary or a good idea necessarily. But we had a good conversation about it and we didn't fight about it. And I was pleased with that. I right, see what's been added here in the chat. Hippie in disguise says, people crave happiness. Some are better at appearing happy. Some of us overindulge on dopamine, never bored. All right, well, I mean, would you agree that if enlightenment is a state of being that actually people attain, and it has certain descriptors or certain attributes you can demarcate from other stuff by, that enlightened people aren't bored ever, even though I agree they would be not bored for a different reason. That was my question regarding that. There are different types of tribes of Buddhism. Some have a god and authority. Some value the pro progress of the self towards ideals, like e.g., like this given by Kant. Okay, well, I don't mean to lump all the Buddhists together. My bad. Mindfulness helps to find the moment to enter the flow, I would say. I, I would suspect that mindfulness would help me, if I had more mindfulness, would it most help me by, hope, by hopefully directing the state of flow to the right thing. Because a lot of times I just sort of fall into something, you know. Why can math be used to describe physical stuff like the rocket equation, etc.? That's a very good question, and there are there's a very specific answer to it. So one of the things that trips people up a lot is the idea of universal truths. For example, pi. Um, are you laughing at me or the phone? This is Taylor. Oh. Would Taylor use the name for Snapchat mental cyclones? Maybe. I don't know. Like Katie Devine added me a mental cyclone. This is probably Taylor, yeah. Um, His own name's Jimmy. <laughs> Taylor the, would do that, right? Possibly, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, so let's look at, at 3.14 repeating, pi. People will, will be sort of, can present that as an example of something that's a universal truth that is discovered, not created, right? Um, nobody created the reality that 3.14 times the radius equals the circumference. It's a descriptive truth. It's not a... Um, it's not a truth of meaning, okay? That, that's the most important thing to, think, to remember here. The reality of, of how to calculate the circumference of a circle, now, that's meaning. But pi itself is a meaning. It's just random digits. So the question then is, how, why is it then that math can be used to describe those things? Well, the answer is, in the same way that language can be used to describe language things, like words can. Um, for example, if I want to tell you where I went and what I did, I would use words. But the reason math works is not because... Uh, it's reflective of some eternal truth, exactly. Although it's very tempting to say that because we see all these maths throughout the world, right? It, instead, it's because things have an interrelated architecture to them that that is where math comes from. On the metaphysical plane, you'd say it's where conditional logic comes from, the interrelatedness of things. On uh, conditional logic, the the functions are the statement connectives. In math, the functions are plus, minus, times, divided, whatever, okay? Uh, so if I say A and B. Then D. And C. if B, then D. And if A and D, then, then E. C and B. And I would conclude E. D. For sure, from that, because I have A and B, and that means I have D, and that means I have E. So, there you and go. And I don't have C. But the thing is, 
note what I'm doing there. I'm not providing any details about what it is I'm talking about. I'm just demonstrating conditional logic. I'm demonstrating the conditionality of something without using any words. So it's much more like math. Okay, all right. Now, when we make the leap over to math, it's just like, oh, it's what's happening there is people need a way to make physical objects more useful by communicating things about them. So if not D, then I. If not K, okay, Kimmy, C, Kim, stop then please. K. <sighs> okay. Um, now we have a perfectly good coop. The coop is not the issue. Kim wants a chicken run. Um, but regardless, let me get back to this thing that is being interrupted. Yeah, now, I, I want to finish the goddamn math question, okay? Because it's, a, it's okay, an important well, question. It's an important question. So, look. Okay. Just like we can assign... Between two worlds, remind him. Just like we can assign values of truth or falsehood to a given statement or a given variable without actually even saying what that variable is, so too can we assign units of measurement to physical objects. It's just a different kind of unit of measurement. And so math is about how to maximally communicate attributes of physical objects, because physical objects have attributes. Metaphysical objects have definitions. So can you how to most effectively communicate about uh, time objects or word objects? And they're exactly equivalent. It's just a different kind of symbols we use because instead of being definitionally constrained like word objects are, they are physically constrained such that um, well, it, you know, we, if we say, get me the, the six-inch long piece of wood instead of a uh, nine-inch long piece of wood, then what we're saying is, here's a way for you to identify the piece of wood I want you to get. And if we're trying to figure out how long a piece of wood is we need to fit in a spot and we measure here, then it's not that the wood is 12 inches, right? It's not that there's 12 anywhere about it. It's just that with this language produces a grammar of certainty deduction stuff in the same way that conditionality does. The difference being the, the logics of math are TE logics mostly, which is to say, it's not about, uh, it's not conditional. So when I miscut the shelf the other day, which I did, I, I half-assed measured it. I went in there, it, was, it wasn't two feet. It was two feet, one and a quarter inches. And, um, no, I'm sorry, it was two feet and a quarter inches. Or two feet and three quarter inches. I, I don't remember exactly now. But the point is, I was like a half inch off or something. And uh, that's bad TE because in that sense, I'm not applying the math skills that I have. You might not think of measuring something as a math skill, but that's exactly what it is. It's rendering physical reality into numerical approximations. Um, and so that's that's what it is. When we're talking about things like the math of of state change in complex systems, in those instances, we're describing patterns of uh, patterns of of population dynamics, really, uh, of of different populations of things, either totally physical things like uh, heat and the material being heated, or or biological things like uh, turtles and fish and, and birds and stuff who are competing against each other in, in an ecosystem that's being, is changing. So if you have an ecosystem that's changing because it's entering into a new period of, a period of new equilibrium, before this, this forest used to be filled with this kind of deer. But since the invasive Asian deer have come in and eaten all this kind of plant, those deer have gone away, which means the wolves now eat the rabbits and and it's caused this big shift in the ecosystem around here. Well, with the introduction of that new species is causing the disruption in the ecosystem, you're gonna see state change math that looks like this. It gets very chaotic before it settles into the new equilibrium. And you know, somebody once pointed out to me, well, there's no real equilibrium, it's just a matter of where you're looking at the how far away you're looking at the the, the graph. Well, sort of, but that's not really true. Okay, uh, let's see. Wouldn't suffer from boredom, perhaps? 
My interpretation of enlightenment is inner contentment, not necessarily complacency. Mobile backyard coops, they're not too hard to build. If you build an outdoor coop, don't use chicken wire, don't have chickens on predators. I built a full coop that's like this garage, basically. It's like half the size of the garage, or less than half, maybe. But it's, it's, I can stand up all the way in it, and it's a, a full, nice coop, well made. It's, you know, sturdy, and it's an inside building. So, 10 by 5. 10 by 5. That's the. That's their coop. They have a coop. But Kim wants to now build additionally a chicken run. And her reason is concern for the chicken's well-beings, which is fine. I mean, I have concern for the chicken's well-being as well. But the thing is, we have a backyard with a very tall uh, fence all around. There's no way any predators can get in. Okay. That If they could get in to the backyard through the fence, then they're going to be able to get through whatever Kim's got up for chicken run. So, I mean, that's my theory. But I, like I'm saying to her, I'm not trying to stop her. I'm just trying to talk her through the possibility that maybe we don't need a chicken run. Okay, wouldn't, uh, let's see. My interpretation of enlightenment is inner contentment, not necessarily complacency. Well, I would agree. It would seem to be inner contentment and not complacency if it were going to be a meaningful term in any sense. I would expect if I were enlightened and it were a meaningful term that I'd be both fully content, non-complacent, excited joyful and also not somehow like not not thwacked out on shit I, I mean meaning like i don't need to be absorbed into something that's interesting for you to be happy i guess I, I don't know i don't know what it would mean let's see what this one says what makes nt types depressed i don't know about nt types i'm an nt i don't know about nt types in general i'll talk about entps <laughs> Answered. You're actually mad, not really depressed. It makes you depressed. But yeah, if you if you're stubborn for a long time, like what they're getting depressed. When they haven't eaten, they get depressed. When they haven't had sex, they get depressed. I, I mean, I would say the biggest thing is when words don't work. When words don't work, I get depressed. When I'm not being able to communicate with somebody. Um, square and compass shaped with eight foot wood arms that support run lift arms and coop run roll around the yard they pick up all your ways just an idea we've seen something like that I, I think I know what you're talking about and uh, that's something we considered a movable thing like that but we don't really have that much grass we don't have that big of a, of a yard right there what are we talking about tonight well we initially started talking about um, enlightenment and what it means to, if, if it's a real thing, or where if not, what is one aiming for purportedly in self-development? And and if, I guess, sort of an ancillary question would be, is it wise to aim for self-development? Is it necessarily self-defeating in some sense because you're thinking about it too much? Those are some of the questions that I was musing about when I put the topic up there. Uh, let's see. I don't know how a left-handed person becoming right-handed, but you can train yourself to become ambidextrous. Yes, you can. You can train yourself to become amb ambidextrous, but it's not usually wise unless you have a specific job. So if you're a baseball player and you want to be a switch hitter and you find that you can hit right-handed pitchers better when you hit left-handed even though you're right-handed, well, okay, then it would be a good, good idea to train yourself to hit left-handed. That's not quite the same as training yourself to be ambidextrous, right? Uh, I'm an INFP <laughs> trying to become a physicist. Talk about TE seeking. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, you'll be fine in the field, I'm sure. INFPs can can do a lot of different things. It's just, uh, I mean, that's a lot of TE you have to do yourself. TE seeking means you're hoping to get somebody else to do it for you. I guess it's external discipline, but ideally you have your significant other provide that for you. Um... Joseph, yes. Oh, it's Brenna Lee. I'm Brenna Lee. Yes, just practice using your right hand for your living daily task. How are you going to be able to move the island right subconsciously down it? Oh, Brenna Lee, why do you have such an annoying voice? Would you like a different voice now? Okay, I'll give you a different voice. I'm Brenna Lee. Really? That's interesting. <laughs> There was a basketball player that switched to shooting hands from one season to the next. Hmm. 
He uh, was on my middle school team. Is the inferior function best accessed through the tool function? Why or why not? If it is, how does it differ from relation of the tool and dominant function? No, I don't think the inferior function is accessed through tool function. I think it's the alternate to the dominant function. So uh, most of the time I'm doing expert intuition and I'm not paying attention to stuff that had already happened. I'm thinking about new stuff now. Meanwhile, like Kimberly's remembering an hour ago, we decided to go to Miami. Okay, so we're going to go in about 30 minutes. And then like one minute later, she thinks to herself, don't forget, we're going to this thing in 30 minutes. And she'll remind me again. And she's actually thinking about stuff that's already happened, like where we decided to go and when we're going to go. I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm thinking about new stuff. So like 90% of the time I'm thinking about new stuff, 10% of the time I'm referencing my active SI memory seeking stuff. Where There's lots of occasions where I am get lost in my head and I forget what I'm doing. Forget why I walked into a room, forget where I'm driving, forget whatever. Where the toilet is. I remember where the toilet is. That's <laughs> fine. But um, the point of that is, it's because I, it's not because my SI is bad or something. It's because your first and fourth are, they they occupy the same channel and they, they do two halves of the same job. The problem is, no matter who you are, your first function is to do, bearing the vast majority of the workload, 90%. Your fourth function is bearing 10%. So in theory, what you want is to, uh, like if you're an ideator, if you think about it from a practical uh, efficiency standpoint, the best way to ideate would be to uh, spend half your time ideating and the other half time keeping track of the ideas you just came up with. But nobody who's really good at ideating does that because to be really good at ideating is it take a bath. doesn't mean anything. What, what, what does mean something is to spend all of your time ideating. On the toilet or in the bath, like me. My name's Eric. So, obviously... You need duckies. What are my thoughts on Zen and Enlightenment? Well, what happened? I have to leave this puppy dog. Why? What's she doing? Being terrible. Oh, do I want to get typed? No, I'm, I'm asleep. Oh. Or I was. Okay, okay, look. Shen, shut the gate behind you so just stay out in this area. Okay, okay I think there's any back gates right there. Okay, no, but shut the, the, the right brown the gate. Okay. Yeah. She doesn't need coffee. Yeah, I got you. See? Okay, okay. What are your thoughts on Zen and alignment? Well, I've said before about Zen, I think it's an NI biased modality. It's basically saying silence your monkey mind. That means cut out the NE. And it's saying, be in the moment, like be sensorily in the moment, sit and just attend to what is there that you are sensing without words clogging your brain. So it's basically saying, be N-I-S-E. And to me, that's not an appropriate form of meditation for me. It's not that I hate it. I mean, I do find it uncomfortable and, and I'm not. You know, I'm not accustomed to being still like that, right? But what I'm saying is, even if I can or could and have in the past actually gotten in the habit of sitting Zen meditation, I did that in college for a while. There was a Zen, a Zen temple or Zen, whatever they call it, downtown. And I went there and, and sat in the meditation room with other random people at like six in the morning for quite some time. And it was like, it had definitely had a an impact on my my being, but um, I've I've since come to think that that meditation for an ENTP lies not with NIC but with SINE. So as an ENTP, I, my meditation lies in being more ISFJ like in spending the time to to really attend to my SI shit that I'm doing rather than just shoveling my food down and getting back to ideating. To really spend time to, to stop being excited about something and start being content for a stretch of time here and there, you know? That, that's, 
that's how I most meaningfully meditate is, and it's not anything that looks like meditation. It's things like um, taking care of myself and going to get another jacket or, or going to go to bed instead of staying up. Even though this seems like a good idea, but making myself go, you know what, just let it go, just let it go. Just chill out for a second, relax, feel, feel your, do this thing. You know, it's like, it's just like SI awareness and spending time in SI forces an any down to slow down and get in tune with themselves. And ENT doesn't get in tune with themselves by FI, so that's what we got. I can't speak for all NFPs, but I'm not at all sentimental about things. I'm more sentimental about doing activities I did when I was younger now. Okay. Do you think short attention span working memory disorders are more likely a chemical imbalance, nutritional defi deficiencies, or personality traits? Uh, short attention span slash working memory disorders. I I don't know. If you're talking about like sort of language processing disorders, I have had students that, uh, a certain percentage of students, is very it's a small percentage, but it's such a dramatic reality for them that it's, it's notable enough to me that I've noted it on multiple occasions, which is they can't remember things word for word at all. Like, just not at all. Like, you go, repeat this sentence back to me. Joe and Bob travel to the store in a horse-drawn carriage. And they'll say something like, two guys went shopping with a horse, or two guys went shopping by going on horseback. Something sort of equivalent, right? Um, but they won't be able to repeat it word for word. It's like they don't hear words like that for some reason. I, I'm not sure what's what's up with them. As to what I think is the cause of it, uh, definitely not nutritional deficiencies. Um, not personality traits. Could be some sort of just cognitive disability or could just be a weird variant of human expression that's got no SI. It's just all NI. I, I don't know. Short attention span is not the same thing as attention deficit. So I have attention deficit disorder, so to speak, ADHD supposedly, but um, I don't have a short attention span. I I do have I do have a short attention span in some sense when I'm not on amphetamines but what i really have is a lack of motivation to stick to anything because everything seems boring or nothing excites me enough or something like that it's a little different and uh when i am excited by something regardless of whether i'm on any drugs or not when i am excited then my attention span can be in quite powerful like i can give something a lot of attention for a long time and be really focused on it. So it's it's definitely reductive to say I have a short attention span. It's not reductive to say that I am very picky about providing ongoing attention to something. So I'm quick to pull the trigger on certain shit that I think doesn't isn't just isn't doing it for me for one reason or another. Let's see. I've seen an argument somewhere on a Facebook group that Donald Trump's an ENFP. I think that's pretty ridiculous. What are your thoughts on that? It's ridiculous because the one thing I can see really clearly in Trump, there's two things I can see really clearly in Trump, are SE Dom and third slot FE, which makes him an ESTP. The TI, the TI is there. He does TI parsing. He's just weak as fuck. He, it's almost like NI is counter is he never he never developed a fourth function everybody counter values their fourth function when they're young you just like I, I don't ever want to have to deal with that shit like look at not host mark he's got si that could you almost want to think it's polar it's not he's a very young ENTP. but trump never had to develop in any way because he had, he had all the means to not have to i guess
What types are most likely fast eaters versus slow eaters? Um, I would say ISFJs are reasonably slow eaters. ENTPs are typically fast eaters. Uh, ESFJs are slow eaters. Let's see. ESTPs are fast eaters. ESFPs are probably fast eaters. I think all your action types are fast eaters. So ENFPs are probably fast eaters as well, but they might not be. Because with intuitives and feeling, they might be like, who knows? I'd say ISTJs are slow eaters. I would say ESTJs are slow eaters. Probably INTJs and ENTJs, but ENTJs might not be because they might prioritize something else. Interesting question. Uh, I have ADHD. It's not just a short attention span that I have to deal with, but the hyperfocus as well. Right. Hyperfocus is a good tool. It's not being trapped in NI. It's being, you're not trapped even in it. It's like being carried along by the inertia of your wheelhouse. So it's going to be your one, two, one, two, three. You know, she's going to have to plan your one, two, three. If it does, you'll, you'll have a good chance of getting into a state of flow. So for me, that means it's going to have to let me ideate on the fly. It's going to have to let me legitimize it by a logic. And it's going to have to, in some way, engage some people like to get affirmation out of it. And it's all in my wheelhouse, and it's a lot easier for me to enter a state of flow. Uh, what was your most painful... What was my most painful, where is that? De defeat and debate when you were a competitor. What were you affirming or negating? What type was the person who beat you? You know, it's funny. I don't remember a lot of my debating from high school. I, I do remember one loss in particular where it was, I think it was finals. It might have been semifinals. And my partner and I, we lost fair and square, but we, I remember what we lost to. We lost to a, an argument that basically said, well, they were affirming something. It was a very squirrely case. And the way that they were going to pay for it was, was by taking extra water from California, which is the time I have, uh, and selling it to China or something. No, selling it to the Middle East. That's what we were, they were going to do. And they had these cards that said this was a plausible thing to do. And, of course, we didn't have any evidence to counter this shit because it's as squirrely as you can get. Back in the day, you had to have a funding plank. And I, I love to attack the funding plank. Whatever whatever people were running out, I'd attack the funding plank. You not, you can't pay for this. Um, but uh, I couldn't I couldn't make any – I couldn't get anywhere with that funding plank. I, there, it was airtight. They put together a fucking airtight case. It was really clean. And there, I couldn't find any way in. And I'd never experienced that before, I guess, where I couldn't find any way in. So, um, because, but of course, back in the day, there's no internet. So you had to, you got your, you cut your cards. We, like we get, the, the debate team would get subscriptions. The US News and World Report, um, The Economist, uh, Newsweek, uh, Christian Science Monitor, a couple others. You know, we get subscriptions of those things, and you cut actually cut cards. You know, you take scissors and cut the fucking shit out of the out of the newspaper paper or the magazine and glue it onto paper, and that's how you cut cards. And you highlight it or something, right? So, um, when people came up with when people found like a squirrely ass argument like that selling water to the Middle East thing, it you could find yourself in a bind. You know, it's like, that's not, I didn't remember reading that in any of those magazines. And those are all the sources we have, kind of. All right, let's see. I don't remember who beat us. I just remember the case. I don't even remember what we were running. It just the general neg. I was, I mean, we were just negating. Back in the day, policy debate didn't do a lot of neg Ks and shit. There were, in fact, they didn't do any. We just negated the AF, which is, which I prefer that style of debate, frankly. I'm confused about FI. I heard someone describe FI dominance as a constant focus on what everybody in a given situation is feeling, but isn't this FE? Um, no, not really. So FI is your own feelings for sure. But to the extent that you're an FI dom and you understand how important feelings are to you, 
you understand how much it matters that we are careful and gentle in our relationships with others, that people's feelings are fragile, um, that people are important and precious for who they are, not for shallow things like appearance and whatever else, okay? So this is sort of an INFP ideal or principle that they tend to, they tend to demonstrate or because of the fact that they are so, their implicit value is FI. So it means that they, they fundamentally get it and see it as, see the full significance of it in its most vivid form. So what that means is when they see somebody else hurting, they're concerned about authentic emotions. Effie, on the other hand, is not. Effie people still care about other people, but that's their FI, not their Effie. And they still care about other people's emotions directly, but that's their FI, not their Effie. Their Effie cares about other people's perceptions, and their Effie cares about how given behavior is going to impact social hierarchy, and their Effie cares about showing that they care about other people's emotions, because that's important. But their FE doesn't actually, isn't concerned so much about their emotional state. Effie's the one who's going to go, yeah, stone him to death, stone the heathen to death, and join in with the rock throwing and kill the person. That's a nice, fun, juicy group, group murder Effie satisfaction thing. We all in the, in the end group hate you, and we're going to kill you, and we're going to feel togetherness because of it. That's not having any identification at all with the FI of the person having rocks thrown at them because that's not what FE is about. Now, the FE person might very well say, you know what? No, I don't want to do this. Most likely, it would only happen that way if they grew up in a situation where there were lots of, they had lots of other opportunities to learn contravening values and to get a sense of how this was going to play after the fact or something that was going to play well, then they might not do it, but but the FI user doesn't need any social conditioning to get them to not throw the rocks. FI users will jump up to defend the tyrant. Don't talk shit about Kim Jong-un. He's a person too. He's a unique and beautiful human being inside. Uh, let's see. That's not a basic question, Cynthia. It's a good question, and it's something that confuses a lot of people. Mary Ann Rad. That was a really interesting question. I find eating to be more of something that is taught. I think people watch how much, what, how the people around them eat and emulate it. I think girls think that. I never think about what I'm eating at all or what anybody else is eating. Hyperfocus is a dangerous tool, way too hard to manage, and can make you unwillingly lose too much time. That's true, but you got to compare it against the alternative, not the ideal. You don't get to choose exactly the right amount of focus or at least i don't very often usually i get hyper focus or or malaise i have chair fast eaters hmm. too many possible fe problems with food so you gotta get it down as quickly as possible uh i'm way behind well Cynthia, I'd agree on this description of FI. Bruce, what do you mean by hyperfocus? Brenna Lee at Cynthia, how everything is make you feel personally. Yeah. What do you think of paraconsistent logic where the principle of explosion doesn't apply? I don't know what that is. I've not heard of it before. I, I'll have to look it up or you'll have to explain it to me. What if I eat slow sometimes, but other times I eat fast? What if I eat at a medium pace? then you're a bad person. All decent people continually eat at the same pace at every meal, every chew. You should have at least eight chews per bite and no more than 12. So how long will it take you to accurately type a person? Usually I can do it in about an hour and 15 minutes, no problem. I, I mean, it depends. Like the other night I had a lady that was, that was still somewhat, I'm still somewhat torn up at the end of it. She was a tricky nut to crack. But usually... That's the minority of people who are tricking this correct. Most people, I can do it in an hour, no problem. Some people, it doesn't even take me an hour um, to to know in my head. But I'll, I mean, I'll spend more, well, more than that just to. Twenty minutes of his shenanigans all mixed in. 
And none of my shenanigans. I take this shit seriously. What are you talking about? I mean, I make jokes. I'm personable. But I, I don't. I'm I'm on task the whole time. <sighs> Let's see. Okay. Uh, so how long would it take to uh, focusing on tasks so hard that you forget everything else, even time and food? Yeah, I do that a lot. And that's good what you say about the wheelhouse regarding the hyperfoot and folk. Thanks. You're welcome. How quaint. Are you talking about my cottage? My English country cottage? Thank you. Quaint is exactly what I'm going for. Procrastination, I don't think it has anything to do with types. Thoughts? I think it has something to do with type for sure. I think that, um, like, it doesn't mean that ESPs can't procrastinate or ESFPs or, you know, it, it just means that um, the ones who are, the, the thing about procrastination, is, there's different reasons why it happens, right? A lot of procrastination happens because you just have a really hard time motivating to start a task that seems unpleasant. And once you start it, a lot of times you'll sort of fall into the rhythm of it and it'll turn out to be not that big of a deal. But the challenge is getting over that initial anticipation of it as being awful and just general dread of not wanting to do what you don't want to do, right? So um, if you're procrastinating because of that sort of thing, that seems like a cognitive function thing to me. It's trouble pulling the trigger and being too deliberative and stuff like that. If you're procrastinating for some other reason, like uh, you really don't think it's a good idea to do this and you're just dragging your feet. I've had that happen to me before where I've made a decision, but I'm not happy with my options. It's like, I don't want option A, B, or C, but it looks like I'm gonna have to choose one. Okay, fine, I'll choose C. And then I say that to myself, but I won't actually do the thing that required me to choose C that I would do that, that it would require to, do, to choose C. So I'm just um, dragging my feet, you know, hoping that something else will come up. And sometimes it's a good thing to drag my feet. Sometimes I drag my feet without really knowing I, that I am or why. And it turns out to be very glad that I did. Everyone can have the habit of procrastination, but sometimes get rid of it faster, especially NI users. Yeah, well, and some of us, I always resonated very much with the panic monkey guy. You know that famous internet thing where he talks about having the rational rationality person driving and then playtime monkey comes along and takes over the wheel of the ship and then there's the dark playground where you go to where you're you're just, the, really, the only thing you're doing in life is avoiding the thing and and feeling the weight of having to do it and not doing it and just time dripping by that i've had that experience plenty of times before i don't really now anymore because i don't have a lot of of tasks i have to do out of self-discipline what huh I'm not saying I don't have tasks to do. I'm saying I don't have tasks to do out of self-discipline. There's a difference. Um, Bruce, I get into that state to the greatest degree when I'm doing a challenging math problem because I lose track of time. It can make me inefficient in how I tackle the problem as well. Well, that's true, Jeff Barnes. And a real a state of, of full thwackage kind of flow, you can definitely be inefficient. Like... I, I don't know what I was thinking. This I was not particularly thwacked or anything, but um, I don't know what I was thinking when I took these shelves down and I I thought, and they're just dirty old shelves, right? But there's a little bit of mold on the bottom of one of them. So I decided to be all like, well, pour hydrogen peroxide all over them and torch them so in case they like, kill any mold, uh, take all these extra precautions and shit. It's like, how much time did I spend doing that before I was like 15, 20 minutes just fucking unnecessarily scrubbing these these shelves that are wood anyways, like particle ward. And then I realized, what the fuck are you doing, Eric? This is a waste of time. You know? You just get in, into the process of it and just see it. Why do you keep making sounds like that? Because it sounds like every project you do. Oh, Jesus Christ, woman. You, you just... 
absolutely despise me or what? No. Well, you sure sound like it. Um, quaint referring to pre-internet days. Oh, right. Yeah, that was quaint. <laughs> Eric, I need your help to type a friend who is not on YouTube. I'm hoping you can do it by another person who I am confident is the same type who is on YouTube. Okay, well, you want me to type please someone on YouTube? I can do that. That's fine. Just put a link and I'll I'll get around to them at some point here. Uh, Marianne, that's TE. TE doesn't care how you feel. <laughs> and neither do I, says Stephen Lewis. I procrastinate a lot compared to my ENTJ and ISTJ brother. Lol, they rarely do. So essentially, high TE users are less likely to procrastinate. I agree. I've never seen my dad procrastinate on anything. He's an ESTJ. Is NI to any as convergent thinking is to divergent thinking? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Um, yep, great video. I don't know what video you're talking about. Do you ever use lol when you haven't actually produced audible laughter? Does this make you a manipulating liar? If I eat too fast, am I a sociopath? I don't use lol when I don't lol in reality. I've never heard anybody use lol but you. If Kim thinks it's pronounced LOL. She's still in 1997 or something. Um, and she insists that she's right about this, that I'm the only one who says lol. So if, if you guys want to chime in on that for me, I'd appreciate it. I procrastinate mostly because I forget. I'm too busy in my head that I lost track of time or because it doesn't feel like the right time to do something. Yeah, but this doesn't feel like the right time to do it. Because the right time to do this is going to feel like I'm excited about it. And this is going to be great. Except I'm never going to feel that way about this task I dread. Overprotective and overcaring parents can induct procrastination as a habit in their children's lives because they usually don't teach them how to have responsibility. Well, it's, it's questionable if you can teach kids to have responsibility because it's my position that some personality types are inherently less responsible. Now, you can, you can, like, ENTPs will never be taught anything about responsibility. We will learn the hard way. We will experience some consequences from certain kinds of irresponsibility and we'll cut back to manageable levels. It's the only way we're ever going to learn the goddamn thing is by experiencing the consequences. We're fucking stubborn in that regard. I think saying lol, haha, and smiley, etc. is an empty display of a text to make the other person feel like they are firm. I mean, generally it is. I don't I don't use those things usually. Uh, in, uh, well, I use ha ha or lol, uh, but almost every time it's because it actually made me laugh. Otherwise, I'll just say something else or just thumbs it or something. I don't know. Hyperfocus in math problem looks like doing too much trial and error without reflecting on the nature or of the problem or how you are tackling it. Well, I would say, I wouldn't, I'd say then at that point, the word hyperfocus has mission creep. There needs to be a separate word for, um, you know, excessive thwackage such that you are no longer checking back against the, the frame. Why am I here and what am I here to accomplish? You know, it's the sort of thing that can happen when you're painting walls uh, in the house with a roller and you start to, like, try to get every last little bit of paint out of this roll before you put it back in the pan. I'm always telling myself when I'm painting, Eric, I remind myself of this periodically because I start doing that. I go, Eric, your job is to get paint on the walls, not to save paint, not to, like, make sure you get maximal <coughs> distance out of every drop of paint. <coughs> Okay. Uh, there's a Canadian professor who has no, some. It is L O L. Edgy Wedgy says it is L O L. Okay. I don't think other people are going to agree with him. You say L O L too, Anetta. Okay. I guess I'm the only people who says lol. No, it's lol, says Joey Joe Shabadoo. Joseph House says, you are the only person who says, well. I'm an ISTJ and I procrastinate all the time. I never want playtime to end. Yeah, me neither. So Joey Joe Shabadoo is right, and I'm right. Joseph House is wrong. And Aneta H is wrong. Joey Joe Shabadoo is right again. Okay. As an ENTP, do you have trouble finding out what you wanted to do in life? 
I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, there wasn't anything I wanted to do in life for a long time, and that nothing mattered at all, and that there was nothing meaningful that one could do, except, you know, party and socialize and stuff. Uh, and then eventually I sort of fell into work that revealed what purposeful work was to me. You know, even when I was just teaching English at first, having come from special ed where work is soul killingly purposeless, you know, and you're going, you're literally putting on displays of things for the purpose of putting on those displays, even though they're just displays. So there's this federal act called the Individual Disability Education Act. It requires people, no matter how disabled, to get some sort of um, modified curriculum that's equivalent to their grade level curriculum. And so if you have a 17 year old, for example, in your class who is ambulatory, can't speak, drools in a diaper, basically vegetable, you're supposed to teach them Shakespeare still, some modified form of it. And, and it doesn't matter that it's insane to even consider such nonsense. You supposed to go through things anyway. There you can see how soul killing that shit is, right? It's like nothing is nothing's real, nothing matters. It's all just a show. Um, when I got to teaching English for the first time, I was dealing with regular kids. I realized, oh, I like this. This is pretty satisfying. It's like I'm good at this naturally. I'm not good at it yet. At the beginning, I didn't really have very good classroom control, and I hadn't learned a lot of things I needed to learn. But regardless. I, I got the fact that this was a real thing. You could do it well or poorly, that it mattered, that these people who were paying this business to educate their kids were going to pull them out of this business if I didn't do a good enough job, you know? So that was the first time I really understood that that it mattered, that anything mattered. Um, and since that point, I guess, I, I, I don't feel so much anymore like I have trouble knowing what I want in life. But... I guess it's still true sort of in the short term. Like, I don't necessarily know what I want right now, but I, I have a general sense of what I want in life. Curtis, maybe so, but I bet you'll only procrastinate with the time in between, a due date, not missing the deadline. I think it's because you're an SI dom, ergo, you are chilling and indulging and feeling good on a sensory level. That's the thing. SI doms are not the same as... TE DOMs at all or FE DOMs at all. So they're not interfacers and they are uh, perceivers and they are process people. Uh, however, I'd say SITE is the least process of the process of types. You know, of all the SI, NI, NE, um, SE DOMs, the least process oriented of them all is probably ISTJ, but still process. <laughs> Most people I know say I'm an ENTJ. I just don't agree because I procrastinate a lot. I'm young and don't have a job, but I'm not really sure about it. Well, I mean, remember, it's better to understand whether or not you're an ENTJ by analyzing your attentional manners than it is to buy type descriptions. Type descriptions are often going to be wrong in many, many substantive details. So try to try to focus on how you're actually spending your time being. Is it by solving problems and knowing how to do shit? Is it by knowing the singular way to do shit and you get some combination of those and you're probably on the right chart. Okay. I'll go straight over the deadlines, says Brenna. Does TI care about the truth or just logical consistency? Logical consistency. Truth is just a status you assign for the purposes of argumentation. So uh, let's pretend A equals B. Now, if B then C and A... What can we tell? Well, we can tell C. Why? Just because we assigned the value of A to B. Now, we don't, it's not as clear cut an, ass, an assignment like that of a value when we're doing it in words as it is with symbols, but it's the same basic thing. So, like in a debate round, I might have a case that has observations. Observations are intended to be points that we should both agree, both agree about. And I'm just laying this out here right now. We should both agree about this. Observation one. The sun rises in the east. It's observation two, the sun sets in the west. Nobody should disagree with this. It's not the sort of argument that you warrant. It's supposed to be something so patently obvious or sim simply common knowledge that you shouldn't even have to establish it, but you're going to establish it anyway. So um, TI cares in that regard about 
Right? It's like in that instance, they're saying, I TI presents it not as here's the truth. It says, here's something the rhetorical slope is very steep of. So you shouldn't even give me any pushback on it. But if you do anyway, in case you might, I'm going to establish it. So you have to push back against it directly rather than wait for me, but rather than wait, but rather than me having to follow your argument, you know? So TI says, okay, given these things that we've agreed upon, what's the right answer? And so the right answer is absolute. It's absolutely true relative to the frame that it's in, relative to the assignments of things set in, as they're set up. I could run that same argument again, but this time let's call a G and it would have a different outcome. But the outcome would be just as absolute as the frame. It would just be relative to its own frame, which is why I call TA, TI um, relative absolutism and TE absolute relativism. TE is, uh, so where a TI, you get absolute conclusions relative to the other things that you've got going on in this particular frame. And TE, you get relative con conclusions, but the frame is absolute. So they go, okay, well, yes, I should do this to this doorknob. Oh, so I should do it to this doorknob too? No. I should just do it to this doorknob because my frame is absolute and it's particular. It doesn't generalize out at all. But my answers are going to be uh, absolute in a concrete way not relative to anything else. Either I fixed the doorknob or not. <laughs> it's either working or it's not. It's not. It's not. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't, it's like, there's no way for me to say, well, but I mean, relative to this more broken doorknob, it's working. No, it, 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 it's broken. It, it's, it may not be, it may not look as broken as that other one, but it functions just as little. So in that regard, TE is um, absolutely relative. So, it's, but they're always relative to the particular situation. What about procrastinating about fixing that door? I haven't been procrastinating. I've failed twice now. It's a difficult door to work on. I mean, it, it, you can criticize me if you'd like for failing That's to fix okay. it, for failing to fix it, but I didn't, um, no, I didn't right. procrastinate, is no, what I'm saying. Right. Are you sure? I know how much you love that. Okay, lol, reminds me of the aliens on Galaxy Quest, lol, lol, lol. It's lol, not e lo l, l o l. <laughs> Times have changed. I fear the consequences of procrastination. Why do you have people who beat you when you procrastinate? Wow, I'm really behind. I think Kim agrees with me, says Joseph House. Probably. Yeah. Probably she does. It's essentially the only reason why I accomplish anything. Sensory level, and I may also prefer thinking about whatever I'm thinking about rather than what I should be doing. My INTJ husband would say he procrastinates too. Y'all don't know procrastination. I take procrastination to an extreme. Once I decided to get a planner to organize myself, but I became preoccupied with making nice leather planners instead, and I went on that tangent for a while. I ended up signing a few handmade planners, earning back 20 of the $180 you invested into it. Congratulations. I know that too. Uh, Jerry the Mouse, does reading lol as lol change the meaning? If so, why? Well, uh, no, I mean, just lol means lol and lol means laugh out loud and lol means laugh out loud, so no, it doesn't change the meaning. But it changes the pronunciation. Joey Joe Joe Shabadoo, explain for procrastination to me then. Uh, I'm going to have to do it later, Bruce. I just don't feel it right now. I'm just not feeling it, okay? I'm not feeling that explanation. Can we do it later? Like, maybe tomorrow? Maybe. 
Okay, if I'm feeling it. I procrastinate to hopefully not have to do the work. Sometimes that I'm not in the right mood to do the work. All right. Some there are some things you can procrastinate procrastinate away into non-existence, but many things you can't do that with. So you know, you, you want to make sure you can do that before doing that. Um Lol, it was ridiculous. It was bad because I had grad school exam study for it. I bet a lot of you are procrastinating right now by watching these live streams. That's possible. Which function slot is the poor? Seventh. The blind spot. The spot of no sight and knowledge. Cynthia, oh, oh, but at least you sold some winky. Number seven, Timothy. Jordan Spike. Timothy, number seven. Joey Joe Joe Shabadoo. Bruce, someone submitted revisions to a garment design to me in August. I've been avoiding them ever since. <laughs> hey, Joey Joe Shabadoo. That's not like something I would do. I have a dress hanging in my studio to him for French. He left it with me in June. Now we're talking procrastinating. That I can I've done shit like that plenty of times. What's the best question to ask to exercise TI? Well, I like to ask the hat question though, where there's one red, one white hat, and, two, and three red hats in a bag, and the three criminals each put on a hat on their head. Two of them are blindfolded, one of them is blind, and they the first they say, "Okay," the warden says, "If you can, you can't see your own hat because it's so small on top of your head, but you can see the other people's hats." And take off your blindfolds. Now, take off your blindfold first, guy. He looks at the other two guys' hats and he goes, I can't say what color my hat is. If he can say and get it right, the warden lets him go free. If he gets it wrong, he kills him instantly. If he doesn't answer, he goes back to the normal thing, whatever it was, status quo. Second guy then takes off his blindfold, looks at the two other guys' hats, goes, I can't tell what color my hat is either. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't do it. So then the warden says, well, blind guy, you get your turn, but you can't really see anything, so you probably, you're probably not going to be able to get it right. But the blind guy does get it right. Tells him the answer, the warden let him go free. How did he know, and what was the answer? That's the question I, I think is a good one to ask for TI. It, it's a hard TI one. Like, it makes you think a bit. you got to really work through it. Um, hey, Edie, shush. Does it stress you out? I'd be stressed by disappointing my friend, for instance. I'm sure it does stress her out some way, or it did until it got ridiculous. Then you're just like, well, I can't carry the stress any longer. You need to hush, little doggy. Hush with your mouth. Okay, so um, he has a super stressful. Can't exactly explain my behavior, except the dress is not seasonally appropriate right now, anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Sure. I mean, you say, oh, I don't have winter scissors. I only have summer scissors. I can't cut things in the winter. What do you absolutely suck at, Timothy N? Hmm. I don't know. Answering questions. Any creates. SE observes. Well, SE executes too. It observes, but it executes too. Uh, Jeff, I, I would say NI observes. SE senses. Jeff Barnes, are ESFJs most likely to exaggerate when telling a story? They are fairly likely to exaggerate when telling a story. Um, I, I, ESFJs I, are too. ISFJs are too, but so are ENFJs. It's just Zandy. I procrastinate. It's a task of boring, and I won't learn anything from doing it. If I do find it interesting, I give my 200% effort to that. I forget to even sleep in the project. Yeah, but the real question then is what percentage of your tasks do you find boring? If it's 100% or 99%, then <laughs> your 200% doesn't make up for the other failures. However, if it's 50%, then you're in good shape. My mom is an ESFJ. She tells me how green the grass was the grass. So, yes. What kind of questions you'd like me to ask you, Eric? Uh, I don't know. Whatever questions you feel like asking. Uh, Brenna Lee, Eric, if you were a teacher, what subject would you prefer to teach? <laughs> I am a teacher, and I teach the subject I'd prefer to teach, which is debate. I'm a debate coach. I used to be an English teacher, and I moved on to the thing I preferred. I was assigned a 4,000-word assignment in May last year. I needed to submit it in August. I managed to extend my deadline over and over. Again, now I have to submit it next week. 4,000 words, huh? That's not that many words. 
Uh, what's it about? She's right right now. Have you seen my procrastination video? This is we're talking about procrastination. If you haven't watched it, you probably should have given you some excellent tips on it. It's only like five minutes long. It doesn't count as procrastination, by the way. He was the only one who perception didn't matter, so therefore it's how read, maybe. <laughs> no, that's clever. That's an interesting, interesting creative answer, but no. Uh, if anybody wants me to tell the answer to that, I'll tell them to tell you guys. But let me look for this procrastination video too. For those of you who do like Joey, Joe, 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 um, you have a procrastination problem. You need to watch this video. This will solve your procrastination problem. This video has, has changed lives. Okay. There have been a lot of people whose lives were ruined and, and, and desperate before watching this video. And afterwards, they went on to conquer everything. Procrast. Stenation. Okay, I'll find the video link and put it in the chat here. Because it's important. I care. I care about people is why. Okay, here's the video. And it's right here. Copy this. Copy. Close. And I'll put this in the chat. Okay. Yeah, let's let's work on your essay. Come on. What's your essay about? Okay. Uh, your mom. The school I go to is really merciful with late work related to procrastinating. They let people off the hook all the time. Terrible, terrible, teaching terrible life skills. Well, I think they know that the work they're assigning is pointless. Probably, so it's hard for them to be strict about it. Uh, I haven't seen a procrastination video yet, but I need to get around to it at some point. <laughs> I procrastinate, but then the fear that I will be nothing and do nothing seeps in and I do everything in a panic. Well. Maybe you need to take more picnics. It will solve it. It will solve all of your life problems, Joey, Joe, 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 and everyone else's life problems, too. It gives you the answer you've been looking for. Why do you procrastinate? How do you stop? And how do you complete that essay on Hamlet? It'll tell you everything you need to know. Who's got an essay on Hamlet due soon? It, it's written for you in that video. So, yeah. If you've got an essay on Hamlet, you really want to watch that. Um... Your essay on Hamlet you have assigned. I just assigned an essay on Hamlet to you. Just think about it. I'm assigning essays now. Or I'll give you a bad grade. Okay? You don't want a bad grade, do you? Because last quarter you got a C. And that's not very good. But I mean, it's average. But I think your mom was hoping you'd do a little bit better than that. She was hoping you'd aim for a B this, this quarter. So thank you for asking me what essay that's concerning. What can I? No, I am not ready for bed. Okay. I was going to ask you whether you were. I, I know you were. I was knowing and I was right. You were that time. Usually I am. What is it like to be in the grip of FI inferior? Well, I guess it would be, I guess one way of understanding would be to be so conflicted by your feelings that your TI, your TE is no longer useful. To have useful TE, you gotta know what you want to accomplish. And if your feelings are so conflicted that you're absorbing your feelings all the time, then you're not actually using TE to any good effect because it's just uh, it's just battling back and forth between wanting to do this thing or that thing or the other thing. That would seem to be one way to think of it as making sense. Um, the types that would be likely to get into, quote unquote, the grips of four slot FI, of course, are the types with four slot FI, which are ENTJ and ESTJ. Uh, I've never seen my dad in anything like that that I can think of. Um, so 
I don't have experience watching that. So I just have to give you my sort of general thoughts about what it might look like in that regard. Okay. I procrastinated so much with paying a ticket that my license was suspended. And I had the funds, just kept forgetting. Well, you know, you didn't do anything wrong, so they shouldn't be fining you. I mean, you didn't cause harm to another person. You didn't incur criminal liability. <coughs> What types of procrastinate talking to a girl that they like because they're nervous about rejection? Everybody except ESTPs and maybe ISTPs. All, all guys are scared at first. And then at, depending on what their experience is, they get more comfortable with it. They start to realize that everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's either nervous or unsure or whatever because it's just sort of the nature of dating, you know? Does Kim procrastinate? No, not really. She doesn't procrastinate. She... Flip the fuck out until it gets done. Yeah. Okay, so what type... What's your essay on? I want to know what your essay is on. Did you say it yet? Let me go up here and look. Hmm. Well, a uh, book? What book? You're not being very helpful. Three Little Pigs? The Underground Railroad. All right, we're going to write it right now. Uh, you open up Google Docs and put push the record, record voice-to-text thing, okay? Well, I will ask your question if I see it. I thought there were four... People, do you mean to say that one person is excluded from the room so that each person asked in turn only sees two other hats? Correct. Well, no, they're not excluded from the room. The person you can't see his own hat. And the warden doesn't have a hat. The warden is just the warden. He's the fourth person, but he's not he's not playing the game, he's administering the game. Okay, Underground Railroad. Let's start it like this. A long time ago, there was a lady, and her name was Harriet Tubman. She cared a lot about black people, because back then, black people weren't treated so nice. Anywho, some black people wanted to leave the South, but some white people didn't want to let them go. So Harriet Tubman went down there. And she built a railroad underneath the ground. It wasn't a real railroad. It was a metaphorical railroad called a subway. And they rode it all the way to freedom. Freedom in Canada. The end. There, your essay's done. Stephen Lewis, not as helpful as you had hoped. I'm pretty sure it was helpful. Okay, uh... You had you now have a completed essay on Hamlet, not to mention one on the Underground Railroad. I'm currently writing a book about how to think. Really? Is it an instruction manual? <coughs> Evie, you better shut the fuck up. Um, okay, yes, you will get an A+. Plus. If you really want to get an A+, plus, though, uh, just throw in a couple words like uh, ontological violence, feminist critique, patriarchy, and dominant elite. You'll be fine. Did she have a hat? Eric, have you watched any of the Majority Report videos? Their politics in line with mine. It'd be interesting to see you debate them about libertarianism. I haven't. I don't think. Oh, yeah, I did. That, that, I think I did. Majority report. Let's see, 
Sam. Something happened, says Stephen Lewis. I don't have any more information than that. Just something happened. Can you narrow down a bit? There it is. I think it's this one. I think this is the majority report. And copy. Here, I think it's this one. Yeah, put in some white privilege, put in some equality. You know what? You should want to do it. I have fun with your paper. Then, then do it as a critique from your perspective as a transracial individual. Being transracial means you switch races periodically. Um, like me, I'm transracial. So, uh, you know, you can critique any book as a a dominant elite uh, attack on your your particular subgroup, namely the uh, much oppressed transracials. Yes, that's it right there. That's the one where tear him to be. That guy is mm, tisk 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 my ass off at him. I call it leaking magic. I can't say my plan is to do something out loud. I'm with you there, Joey, Joe, Joe, Shabadoo. You got to be careful with your magic. You can get... Uh, think, yeah, he has a red hat. Correct. Um, you see, magic is tricky. It's very much susceptible to people tipping it over, Right. And if they do, all the work you put into it is wasted. Um, not that you really consciously put work into it. First, will it to happen or try to be doing it? You got to be doing stuff around it and pretending not to notice it. Okay. Um, something always happens. Cry me a river. That is one of my favorite. Justin Timberlake songs. True story. I moved to another state and procrastinated on updating my life to retake the driver's test and was reduced to a learner's permit until I completed it. Well, you know, everybody needs to be a learner at times. Question have anything to do with car blindness? No. I had a hard time with that. Uh, I Think about it for quite a while. Uh, but I typed it last night or night before. It was weird. She was much faster than me. Hi there, Ruben. Okay. Joey Joe Joe Shabadoo. It's weird. I feel like if I tell people anything, I just won't do it. Yeah, well, that's these things. Because then you won't do them. Once, especially if you're an any user and you say it, as far as you're concerned, you've done it because the words don't matter. But you haven't done it. Actually, do it now. Um. So yeah, don't tell people you're gonna do things. Just do them. Is one of the men also a dog? Uh. Not that I can see. Oh no, one of the men is not also a dog. Also, like a rebellious thing, like I don't owe anyone an explanation. Well, yeah, you don't owe anyone an explanation. But more importantly, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're, you have to do things for FE reasons rather than for legitimate reasons. If you're, unless you're up higher in FE, which doesn't sound like you are. Which types are prone to constantly misplacing items? Yeah, any DOMs for sure. Um, even SI DOMs will misplace things because. She Kim keeps track of so many different things in her head. Like she knows where everything is. She doesn't know what she knows. She puts she's had. 
Uh, the Harriet Tubman story exemplifies the futility of respectability politics and nonviolent resistance under extremely oppressive conditions. Well, it, but it didn't exemplify the futility of respectability politics because it, it those some of the people did escape on the Underground Railroad, and had they intended, had they tried violent resistance, they would have all been massacred, and they would have had no standing in the public in the public sphere as far as a legitimate cause. So you know, you think Bukowski? What type do you think she is, Jeff Barnes? Here's the the wisdom of the Tao, Walter Wiseman. Only by procrastinating that we can complete that which we need to complete in a timely fashion. Profound, because it's self-contradicting. Uh... Can we conclude that procrastination sheds a mindful light on what we could do three times faster? Yes. Sounds complicated, I'll probably do it. Is it Renaissance fair or Renaissance fair? I think it's Renaissance fair. True, Eric, but Harry Tubman forced some of the slaves to escape at gunpoint. And they weren't escaping, they were being abducted. <laughs> I'm forcing you to escape. That fucker. <laughs> I'm forcing them to escape at gunpoint. What do you think as I use her in SE? Last time I learned drive stick shift. Uh, SE, probably. I would say. Um. But I mean, you know, Kim's always telling me she drives better than me. What really is the case is she drives more dumbest human actions. You're wasting the most important currency of your life, time. I agree that wasting time is that sort of definitionally so. However, contingent on the individual to what they can say they would say now, but I don't care much. Uh, I don't know, but I think she has the same type as someone I know in real life. I don't know my friend's type either, though. It could be ENFJ. She could be an ENFJ. She is, but she does. Well, she's not that out in front of people, really. How do you know someone is an SE dom? Well, it's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, it's yeah, difficult to say without anything else. In this. So, uh, different from any for TI because once the TI thing is decided, they do it instead of changing their mind all of a sudden again. Um, you're comfortable with a little self contradiction. Okay. Mm, no worries. I think it's funny. I tell. Good evening, T-I-T-E time. Good evening. I find INFJ men tend to be far more monotone, but the female ones seem to use F-E in a far more stereotypical way. Uh, I haven't found that to be the case. They, I mean, INFJ, monotone, INFJ men do tend to be low-key. I wouldn't call them monotone, exactly. But I guess I see something of a point in what you're saying. But I've known some pretty... Uh, Effie big in certain <laughs> contexts, INFJs. Yeah, you know, like he used to go out and drink and stuff. He'd get pretty, pretty big personality. My book is basically about how people can think on their own time and analyze things without a whole lot of finding out what the other person understands about the topic to thoroughly investigate it. Um, well, thoroughly investigate a topic without worrying about. Oh, that's true, but to thoroughly investigate a topic, in my opinion, means to intentionally, which is to say, okay, well, what are the best arguments for this, against this, etc., which means at least sort of hypothetically considering other people. 
but you may have a different approach to things than me, so that's fine. I'm not trying to tell you how to think. Uh, INFJ. Uh, Eric Thor is an INFJ. I want to watch some of the vid videos so I can put together a good Eric Thor imitation and do like a five minute long video of this imitating an Eric Thor video. I got to practice it a bit though. He's out of control. I am pretty sure you're the first person ever to say Eric Thor is out of control. He didn't seem very out of control to me. Um, you know, Kim's here too, but anyway, like I to talk to Cam. You've probably heard her sighing and and clucking her tongue at me a few times in the background. Clucking their tongue at you. How gay is evolution? Flaming. I think it's the only accurate criteria you give to it. I, I, but what's way gayer than evolution, frankly? A million times gayer than evolution. Commoners trying to play effy positioning with me without fucking answering my questions or responding to any of my fucking points. It's frustrating. Evolution is right or not. You prove me wrong. I don't give a fuck. I'm not attached to evolution either way. I don't care. I just started arguing back because it seemed like a fun thing to thought evolution is real. I just thought, I'll try arguing against it and see how it plays out. I was surprised to discover how flimsy the fucking thing is. You're bisexual? Hmm. Well, I'm transracial. And transgenerational. I changed age. Okay. I'm also transgender. I segue from manly to super manly and back again. Could you type someone by their fiction writing? Not really. Because it you know, uh, men are a uh, degree of polish. It, I'm confident that if I could, if I really applied myself and and focused on it for a long period of time, I don't think I really have the, I don't want to devote that much time to that project, but I'm confident that now those and artistic awareness and cognitive function awareness increased a lot of the novel, that I could write a novel that's pretty kick-ass right now. And I think of kick-ass novels as being INFJ. Ones that are, are really resonant with the characters and the story and not necessarily as perfect as NTP writing. But I would like to be more like INFJ writing, which is say to be more resonant and more uh, real with my characterization and stuff like that. I think I could do it now. And so if you were to try to type me from my writing, hopefully novel you type me as an INFJ and that media is media is all about the skills you develop and to do what's right from an aesthetic perspective rather than just display your cognitive functions he's a cricket And also, Kim, do you print the shirt designs on foil and then press it on the shirts? How many different? We've got a few designs in the in the tank, so to speak. Uh, she, we could repeat. Uh, she seems to like to play around with different fonts and stuff and different ideas. So uh, we are ready to take any t-shirt orders, and we will send no, them out. We are not. not. We don't have an example to show. Them. Okay, well, well, we're, what I got is I got this old school iron. It's like super, super heavy. Cast we're gonna, iron, 1930s. We're gonna see how it works. And but what Kim really wants is a heat press. Um, it's not. It, she had a little trouble with some of the edges of the the irons curling up with the regular iron because it didn't get very hot. I am sure that with this and the the old school iron, we'll see some different sorts of results. Whether it will work or not is another question. If it doesn't, we'll get a heat press. Um, too much any, too much extroverted intuition. Not, not in my opinion, a good artist. Do you think there is meaning in life at all? Yeah. I'll come back to that question if you get answered a little bit more fully. Yes, about these. What type? I don't know. I'm trans type two, INFJ, INFP, exactly 50 50 between the two. Why stop there? Why not be all the types? Sheila W. Hi, all. Hi, Sheila W. Curtis. Hi, Sheila. Corner of J&P. Good business. 
Just think about it. In three days, I'm going to leave a comment on your video on Evolution 59 Minute One. I promise to address your questions. Also, have you read the article I presented? No. Just think about it. As I've told everybody who sends me links in the comments and shit, yourself, don't think I'm going to do your work for you. If there's an argument in that article that defeats my argument, make it. Search for it. You do that. That's your work. I'm doing my work on my end. Um, if learning can alter gray matter in the brain, shouldn't that also be the case with types? I mean, it, there's no doubt that one's expression of attention becomes refined over time. But why that would necessarily cause you to deviate from those things that you're most comfortable to become attentive to things that are less successful for you, I don't. that doesn't make any sense to me. So it wouldn't change type at all. If anything, it would reinforce type. Kim, do you like the cricket? What are its best uses? Yes, I love it. Its best uses are ones that Eric will let me do alone. Kim, I, I want you to do as much of it as alone as possible, but... You know, I know, but then me because you have a problem every so, time. That's fine. I'm not trying. Like, the point is, I'm not preventing you from using it by you. you. I have to use your computer. It's because you don't have a computer. Okay. It's not because I refuse to let you use your computer. Um, Cosmic. Pentastar, you'll have to give her the heat press later on tonight. Heat plans on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it usual for an INFJ to experience bouts of FI and not really know how to resolve it? Yeah, well, it's counter value. INFJs and ISFJs both don't like being stuck in emotions. Which is why Kimberly freaks out when she thinks I'm making her feel bad in some way. She doesn't like emotion. If she doesn't like my emotion, she doesn't like her emotion. And if she's having it, I'm going to bear the brunt of it. INFJs don't like FI either. They're like, you're making me have actual feelings rather than playing social grace back and forth. I don't like that. Uh, Sheila W is cold. It's minus 30 with a minus 50 wind chill. That's cold. How do INFJs use NE? Um, I mean, it's ignoring, and they use it best in conjunction with an ENTP, just like uh, ENTPs use that. And I best in conjunction with an INFJ, in my opinion. The reason being, INFJs are strong at it or natural, naturally capable at it, but it's ignoring. They don't get that they're doing anything, really. And so um, they like to use it best responsibly, intermittently. Let me blah, 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 blah. Chime in for 30 seconds or a minute. Make a joke, maybe, or something like that. He can come up with ideas that are are holding hands with NI, and uh, they feel like that's just as it ought to be, and they don't have to carry the burden of any. If you ask Harry a whole thing, like a whole video, then they're going to have to plan it out a bit. Like, you know, Eric Thor doesn't start those videos just going, well, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I'm just going to roll. Uh, he he's got some idea of exactly what he's going to say in those videos. And he's got sort of like an outline a little bit even. And the reason is because he's not, he doesn't want to rely. He doesn't want to rely on the time, even though he's got competent and he is not that competent. So beforehand, and then he settles it into an NI frame of some sort where he's more comfortable. Um, what's your question, Bruce Wayne? Let me see. Which one did I fail to answer? Purple. Purple. Let's see. Bruce Wayne. You have to tell me what your question is again. I've lost it. I can't find it. I mean, isn't everyone all 16 tests? Because we were all at you. You're in my... Ha ha. Ha. Do you do your own tea work? TI work, damn it. Do your own TI work, yeah. Exactly. Well, you do your own research, right? It's like if you're going to make an argument and cite something, great. Make the argument, cite the reference point, fine. But don't just give me a link and say, learn something from this. That's not an argument. We're debating against anything I'm saying. You're saying, 
I'm super, super lazy. <laughs> okay. Tell us about dim DSP classes. Some of us are broken. Can't. Well, <clears throat> that'll save you the uh, unlearning process after the class. Catholic traditionalist. Go to apologeticslive.com tomorrow from 8 to 10 Eastern to debate the Calvinist pro Protestant Matt Slick. Okay, what's the resolution? I'll be there. That's uh, 5 to 7, my time. Apologeticslive.com. 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern to debate the Calvinist Protestant Matt Slick. Okay. Um, I'm in California. It is cold here. It is like 50 degrees or something. 55 maybe. Tool for introverted hermit and invisible cloaking against Eric. No, she's she wants to to sell shirts and interact with channel people and stuff like that, but she's a little frustrated because you know, we obviously she wants it to be work well efficiently, easily, not have some sort of half assed jury rigged result and stuff. So when I bought this this work, she rejected it right away because it's not the idea really what she wants, but but I keep telling her, you don't know if it's not what you want until you try it. But I get her point, you know. Obviously it's gonna be more efficient to get a heat press, but heat presses are more expensive. Uh, let's see. I've been hitting up these ENIP chicks because they're my duel. But damn I can't Shit about yoga and chakras. <laughs> you know what Kim got done last night? Um, Why don't you tell him what? Reiki? Reiki? It's magical crystal stuff. Uh, our neighbor lady, she does this thing called Reiki where she doesn't touch you, but she like puts her hands over you and either pushes magical energy into you or pulls it out. And puts crystals on you and shit like that. So uh, Kim got it, it done to her in trade for a haircut, and I gotta get it done to me in trade for typing. So uh, I'm gonna see what it's like. I'll be able to report back on it. Uh, I like magical nonsense like that. I like to be. I like experience. Right? What you're saying drives me insane too. I don't want to hear your you talk about your magical nonsense in ways that make it sound like you're justifying it with reasons and think that it's logical. That's the crazy. It's like, go ahead, embrace your magical nonsense, but don't pretend it's not magical nonsense. Oh, Jesus. Why did you move your blowtorch? It looks like it's a freaking muffler next to your head. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so Cosmic Pants Star, you got some good lines in tonight. <coughs> <laughs> it's so true that you trust the person who's dominant and the opposite attitude to your dominant. I trust you as I end up day. I guess I'm more likely to be original or infamous. Thanks, Jeff Barnes. I appreciate the uh, confirmation on that. <laughs> <coughs> LJ, ask them to activate your root chakra. It's code for a BJ. <laughs> Edgy Wedgy, ESFP girls are my favorite crazy. Yeah, Edgy Wedgy, look. <coughs> if you're looking to get laid, it's better than ESFP. Um, call me Penn Star. I do Reiki in the fall when the leaves are on the ground. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah, that's energy healing stuff. My friend's mom does that. She's an INFJ. <coughs> Let's see. 
DSFP dudes are just so energetic. I don't, I haven't met a lot of them, but I met a few. Are all ENTJs monotone? <coughs> oh, that one. I answered that question. <coughs> I said, mm, I don't. Oh, no, I answered a different question about somebody being monotone. I don't think ENTJs are monotone necessarily. I think they're kind of like that, that I think about being like the manager that's trying to earnestly motivate you, but you're just not buying it at all. I think I experience NI more clearly when I when I'm tired or sleepy. To the extent that I experience NI, I'm still not sure. Does this make sense? <laughs> I mean, I, th I think you're you're experiencing NI a lot, but you may not be recognizing it as such. So, um, what was the experience I had? Oh, yesterday. Okay, so. Yeah, if you start paying attention to him all the time, S I N I moments. It happens to me all the time. Maybe it's because it's four or five for me. I don't know. But uh, I went to the car. I was going to do what I always do: try to open the side passenger door and put my bag in. <coughs> Only to realize. Once again, the side passenger door is locked, and my key doesn't unlock the side passenger door. It only unlocks on the driver's side door of the FJ. So, I this time, though, after doing this, God knows how many times, faulting to my SI, God knows how many times, again and again and again, same mistake, trying the, the passenger being locked, walking around. I passed the door. I stopped myself. I was walking over. I was like, don't even bother. I had a moment he kicked in and said, no, Eric, don't do this again. Fucking time. It's always the same. And even if it's not, sometimes, sometimes it's not locked. It's like, for example, this is when it's not locked. If somebody gets out of the passenger door and I get out of the driver's side door, then and I don't lock the car, then the passenger side door is still unlocked. But if I just get out of the car, then the passenger side door is locked. The majority of the time I'm driving, it's just me getting out of the car if we're taking the FJ. So logically, the NI says, don't bother checking the passenger door. Just go right. Once the action was decided, a logical person will either put that decision away and say, okay, well, that's finalized now, or <coughs> we'll act on it. <coughs> An SC person will act on it. And the ESTP would have had that same conversation with Cam about which is the most logical exit to get off on, except he would then have followed through on that plan. Because SE is the ability to cut off further. And when you're cutting off further words, that means you're following through on what's been talked about. Key broke off of my driver's side door, so I have to do the old auto reach around from the passenger side. Uh, your situation is a little worse than mine, then. I'd rather have my situation. I despise anything that isn't logically sound. If it's something which can't be explained rationally, it's probably garbage. I feel believes in supernatural things. Well, I mean, it depends what you mean by open. It's a good start for, for a line of argumentation of sorts. So... Like, how do you how do you determine whether somebody believes it? Do you mean affirms it? Like, you refuse to indulge anybody who makes arguments that say the most rational thing for you to believe is my magical thinking. Um, some of my favorite things can't be logically explained. <coughs> Hello, everyone. I'm here. I'm late oh, lunch. Wow. Late lunch for the press tonight. And you're here, huh? <laughs> How, Don, how, hey, Don, how's it going in the Wild West? That's, there's a hell of a lot unexplainable in the universe. The Patriot, you sure are on some wonderful life moments. With that. What's wrong with skepticism? Isn't it healthy? I, I'm i going to side with Jerry here a little bit. I got no problem with making those kind of comments. To me, are, are doing what I 
I like to call it making a bold claim. Can you dare to back it up or will we stand scrutiny? I appreciate you making a bold claim. Um, fair enough, logically explained. May not be that it's not logical. You have the knowledge, you have to understand it. Sorry, what? The connection isn't good. And pretty much your entire. I don't know what I was answering. Have you ever played table? Yes. I played Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid. And he still plays it in the bedroom. With Kimberly. She's a mage, I'm a cleric. Um, she has a phone. Things get pretty, pretty freaky in there. With our imp familiar. Birder break. So, Patriot, uh, I mean, I think it's possible to make the claim you're making in a somewhat more limited sense that would be a lot more you can simply say I don't think I think almost definitionally that uh, magical affirmations lose argumentationally that's a pretty good what's your question just think about it about SE oh what did I say about it oh I just explained that um se is the se is the ability to cut off words so once something's been determined logically to be the, the most logical choice by an seti person that, that thing whereas intuitor once something's been determined the most logical thing they then proceed to talk about it more or change their mind and decide to go a different course entirely well that was the most logical thing when we were doing that but now that we scrapped that whole plan with some new thing that I've got, I don't do that anymore. So TI in that sense is is useful in its most way for ESTPs and ISTPs. They determine what's logical and then they do it. <laughs> or for the that's for ISTP, for the ESTP, they do it and then make sure it was logical. <laughs> I can justify that shit, right? <coughs> Why do ISTJs have a reputation for being a dick? Well, because it's it's the most metaphysical of TE. So ISTJs are most comfortable with more physical TE in general and less comfortable with the where TE bleeds into TI, which is text. How much money have you made from your cure to the polar FB? Oh, you got a cure to polar FE? Wow. Is it alcohol? Sheila W. I've seen supernatural things in my life. Can't explain it, but I know what I saw. Or is it a cyclops? Which of the types would be more successful in a marketing career? <coughs> <coughs> Eric, I really appreciate your... <coughs> Insight into real time NI. I thought knowing when to throw the ball and at what trajectory was SE. Now I understand the NI pulls on SE data, but NI knows when to commit. Right. That's the knowledge part of it. And I mean, I think SE's got its own kind of physical knowledge, which is just keep digging. You know, like I got to dig a big hole. My arms are getting tired. SE's knowledge is things like, and you might say this is SI, but I think this is more SE. It's like keep us, keep, find the right rhythm and keep that steady rhythm. Yes, it incorporates saying how much strength you have and how long it's going to last. But I, it, I'm sure we've all at some point gotten into a, a physical workflow where you're just hammering through a big physical task and you're just fucking like boom, 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 boom. And your attention is always on next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. So that's a good way to think about SE is next thing, next thing. And it's reliant. And I go, whoa, stop. That's a grizzly bear. Don't grab that one. That'll bite you. Um, my guy is an ISTJ and he's an IT. He's great with computers. Yep. Well, you know, that's why type descriptions aren't a good way to think about it. About tech, but he's my generation. Digital natives, they have a different 
ecosystem in which they were brought up. So they're going to have a different experience with tech. Uh, let's see here. Can't speak for y'all, but my husband prefers things he can see and touch to fix. He loves fixing things, but the non-physicality of some tech concepts doesn't work for his brand. Curtis has moved into a trailer park from a van. Congratulations. And uh, is woman to red lobster for a special treat. I, I guess you call it mug, or just sort of a body awareness of how a flow state of physical labor works or something. Thoughts on graphology? I don't know what graphology is. Is that the study of graphs? Jeff Barnes, yes, that's my inferior SE when I try to rapidly pull out weeds in the garden. So SE is about it's it's about doing what's already been decided. It's the physicality of it. So um, it's it's what happens when you're not procrastinating and you're not thinking about it and you're not still deciding about it and you're not knowing about it and you're not feeling emotions about it and you're not linking to the truth and you're not doing anything else. Well, what are you doing? Well, there's nothing else to do but just do the shit at this point. That's SE. Some rational conclusions are based on truth, discovery, deletion in the past before the theories were proven empirically. Yeah, a lot of a lot such uh, are so. In fact, almost all meaningful theories that people have, have borne out over time, activity or something, they started out with no empirical uh, support, and gradually over time. They test well. The theory predicts this would be the case if we were able to test this, and they test it finally. Oh, it is the case. Look at that. For theories like relativity, it's been remarkably consistent with the experimental results. Take take a different example: string theory. There's no experimental results have been consistent with its predictions, so string theory is almost certainly wrong. Quantum mechanics surprisingly consistent with the predicted outcomes. So probably the theory is right. The theories always come before. I would also point out that another theory that uh, fails like string theory is evolution. But I don't know where go. There are some character traits noticeable in the writing of one, e.g. X or Virgin any, but it depends strongly on the individual. When are you going with the Tao? Do generations really have an effect on personality? I don't think generations have an effect on personality. I think they have an effect on the particularist aspect of things. So, you know, there is definitely the case. It's definitely the case that people are imprinted young with the shit that they are going to carry with them as sort of uh, ground floor knowledge. If you're imprinted young with a a comfort with the a digital ecosystem, you're obviously going to have a different relationship with that, that digital ecosystem than somebody who didn't have it in existence at all when they were young. All right. SI is more muscle memory. SI doms are types to pick up dance or some physical endeavor almost intuitively. Well, sure. I'm not talking about muscle memory. I'm talking about the, the physical labor thing. Muscle memory is like the piano or the guitar where my fingers know from muscle how to go to a C chord or a G chord or something. I would consider that as not a C. <coughs> when I'm talking about the state of uh, physical labor, it does require some awareness of the of, of your pace, but it also just kind of requires an understanding of, of work and of just sort of, of the, the rhythm of it, of like dig, heave, dig, heave, you know, it's like all of it is, is the part of SE that's not actually sensing externally, but is nevertheless, we put it under the category of SE, namely the actual action part and the, the following through on things already decided without reconsidering them, the putting it into words, all that stuff I would put under the category of SE. Technology uh, equals reading people's personalities through handwriting. Sounds like bullshit. If you guys can, I wouldn't hear it. Um, to add on to Jerry's thought, are different types becoming more prevalent in newer generations as society values change? 
I have no way of knowing. I don't think so as a gut reaction to it. But that would be something we'd have to do some serious like about. Uh, the most memory can be short term, a year or two. If you don't use it, you lose it. Eh, I mean, it gets rusty, but uh, I'm not going to forget playing the guitar. And I do sometimes um, take long periods of time off. Not quite that long, probably, but uh, my fingers, my calluses might get soft after a little while. But now that I'm 47, it's like my fingers are, there's no going back in any sense. There's no losing anything. When was the last time I did psychedelics? Uh, it was quite a while ago now. It was probably a year ago. Maybe a little more. I don't know. I like your video on type of mushrooms last time I did, I did psychedelics. I, think. I like your video on in board games. And it annoys me when the opponent frames the game in terms of five. Oh, I felt like trying this instead of the TI frame, which is trying to win the game. Right. Well, yeah. If you're saying... I'm just playing this game for, in ways that I want to play it for my experience, and that's definitely FI. Depending on the game, trying to win is might be TI or, um, but probably I guess trying to win is TI. But the kind of attention you get to win will depend on the game. I don't know if trying to win is anything really, if it's TI or not. What's the status quo when it comes to the origin of humans as a species? Now that I would argue that the type should have to affirm that the that the status quo should be no evolution, because as far as I'm concerned, the issue is in dispute, and there's not enough consensus any of the term definitions or anything to justify them having the name. But if if they do want the neg and they're saying well, what I'm affirming then I'm going to have to affirm that evolution is wrong I'm not going to affirm some alternative because I don't have an alternative I see I shouldn't have to have one I don't have to have one to win the point so but that's an excellent question it uh, suggests you know what you're talking about or know, know about debate or something I have several handwriting styles and think this this at least might be indicative of any, but I've created an IDOM friends who, as well, who are artistic with their handwriting. I just handwrite one way, basically. I, see, I try to make it neater or not, or I don't try to make it neater, depending on how much of a hurry I am or how much I care about being neat. So in that case, is any, the action of making ideas pop up? Yeah, basically. I mean, any is the, the attention, paying attention to the generation of ideas. Um... ENTP, ENTP, HBU. What does HBU mean? Hubba Bubba user? You think I chew Hubba Bubba gum? What's your opinion on vaping? Less phallic than cigarettes? LJ, I don't know what you are. Vapes are big, much more phallics. What do you think about climate change? I think is real. I think it's anthropogenic. And I don't think we should do any of the policies that people are pres prescribing in general. So <clears throat> what I mean by that specifically, <clears throat> I actually do not think we should have any kind of carbon caps, any kind of carbon tax, any kind of Kyoto protocols, any kind of that shit. Because that is trying to uh, partially close the barn doors after most of the cows are gone. And there are some key things we don't know about climate change that would we'd have to know to be sure that's a good idea at all. So, um, for example, it's possible that the relationship between carbon and heating, car adding carbon in the atmosphere and heating the earth is not a straight linear slope. It could be... Uh, know uh like the greenhouse effect where it's it's a positive feedback loop and it gets hotter and hotter and hotter so the first bit of carbon only caused a teeny bit of increase but the next bit caused a little bit more next bit a little bit more it could in theory be like that or it could be the opposite it could be diminishing returns that 
Now we've already done all the heating damage we can possibly do with carbon, basically. We could pump in endless amounts more and we just heat it up a little bit more. It could be like that. There's no math that's conclusive about that yet. So we don't know what the curve is between carbon and heating. Then it makes no sense to limit carbon emissions on the chance that, well, that might be the other kind of curve or something. Because no matter what we do as far as limiting carbon emissions, we're not going to put a stop to them. And the problem's still going to worsen. It's just going to get worse slower than it would otherwise. What's actually going to spawn of some sort. So we need to rely on new ideas to solve the problem that don't exist yet. Or we can try to get new ideas to come into to being, you know, fund research or something. Uh, but concurrently do a lot of little ideas all over the place. So, for example, there's there's iron seeding in the Antarctic Sea that causes algae blooms that cycle a lot of carbon that then die and then fall to the bottom of the sea where it gets sequestered. It's an excellent carbon sequestration technique. You could do it twice yearly, I think, and it would suck up a lot of carbon. It just requires somebody to go down there with a shit ton of iron dust because they got to iron seed the whole this whole dead zone of the ocean. Like this huge dead zone down there in Antarctica, just for whatever reason, I don't know why. Uh, well, I do know why. It's because it doesn't have enough iron. <laughs> so if you go down there and you pour a bunch of iron dust there, then all this algae blooms. And um, that's a good way to do it. So if you do that, and then let's say you breed and toss a bunch of sea otters into the ocean to eat the sea anemones that eat the kelp to increase the kelp population so that you get more carbon sucked out, you could... I mean, I think in general, having more vegetation everywhere would help. And that probably is a natural uh, feedback loop in the opposite direction. Because as it warms, you're going to get a lot more plant life. And uh, and it's going to have longer growing seasons. It's going to suck up more carbon. So it's like it's too complicated an equation for us to take massive political action like carbon taxes and shit. It's stupid. It won't work. And it's a waste of time and money and we sacrifice our prosperity which is the engine of any real solvency we're going to get out of the situation hbu means how about you let's see what it was related to again how about me regarding what um how about you how about you ENTP, how about you i'm an entp as well uh annetta i assume you are being sarcastic what was she saying? I wonder if we will survive a little warming. Well, sure we will. I mean, well, I mean, I'm surviving it right now. So are you. Surviving it with a plum or downright thriving amidst it. Some other guys might not be, but we are. I am anyway. As far as weather goes anyway not, not in general but i went to school with an algae bloom <laughs> nice guy algae bloom that's funny with the current overall mindset of humanity do you believe the people will become proactive or is it human nature self-destructive i don't think um it's either of those things really it's like Humans aren't destroying the planet because they're self-destructive. Humans are destroying the planet because they're industrious. And their their wisdom follows their behind their industry a little bit. Nobody's destroying the planet because they want to destroy the planet. It's not like this business is like, you know what? We're making good profit. Let's see if we can crank up the pollution some. I know we don't need even already a fraction of the pollution we're generating, but let's see if we can double the amount we're generating because fuck this planet that we live on. I hate it. Let's destroy it. Nobody's saying that shit, right? Nobody wants that. People, maybe, you might critique somebody for, for, for example, okay, well, he was so interested in maximizing profit that he cut corners here and there and it ended up kind of harming the planet as a whole. Well, that's going to happen with some business interests, and it's going to happen with some corporations, and some corporate leaders are going to make those sort of choices. 
but that's why we need to there needs to be totally new solutions to the situation there's got to be a technological solution to the carbon thing that's not an issue we can all raise question carbon we just have to think of more better ways to do it uh why is the english language being reduced to words like tbh lit yeet fam thick Etc. Why can't people just talk normal and cut it out with the stupid Snapchat filter? It's infuriating. Well, listen, dog. When your memes are as dank as my smashing of TBH, then lol. I really disagree. Humans do not care at all, and we are willfully ignorant about their damage to the planet. Are you willfully ignorant about your damage to the planet? Am I willfully ignorant about my damage to the planet? They won't outright want it, but if it conflicts with something they do want, they'll sacrifice. Some of the time, depending on the calculus. I mean, I don't feel willfully ignorant. I bet you wouldn't self-identify as willfully ignorant, the patriot. That's the thing. When, when there's a critique of of the whole like this, where people are shitty and bad and man, Are you including yourself in that set? If so, why should I listen to you? Because after all, you self-identify as shitty and bad and man. And if not, then why are you presuming other people aren't also individuals with ability to decide things for themselves like you are? <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna try to smoke another bomb after this. I tell you, this is a major step down from the other way that we just finished, and it is very, very coffee. I don't know how do you really can you really be willfully ignorant? I guess you can try not to learn things. Yeah, I mean, you can say I don't want to hear about that, but I don't think that's how people are with climate change. I think people typically have strong opinions about it. Most people believe in climate change and um, think it's a problem. But, yeah. but the thing that the environmentalists or the, the left in general doesn't seem to get about climate change is just because we all agree it's a problem doesn't mean we should do your solution. It's, it's all inherency arguments. They're like, this is a big problem. This is a big problem. So let's do my plan. Does your plan solve things? Is your plan cost effective? Is your plan the best option? Is your plan generally wise? Does it have harms beyond its purported benefits? What are the possible unintended consequences? I didn't even want to think about any of that shit. Well, global warming is a big problem, and here's some plan that claims to address global warming, so let's pass it. Uh, let's see. Hmm. What do you feel are the limitations of empathy, if there are limit limitations? Limitations of empathy? I mean, to the extent to which I can empathize with somebody else, means I can resonate with their experiences, being similar to one of my own, I guess. And, uh, I, I guess the limit uh, implicit in empathy is that Another person's experience, though reminiscent of some experiences you've had, is unique to them or, or totally subjective or within them, ultimately, and you can't really know what they're feeling or something. I, I don't know how to answer that question. Empathy's not tough, something I think about a lot. Like, when I have sympathy at least and, and i'm not sure the distinction between sympathy and empathy is meaningful really because when i ha i don't i don't think they're really being i don't think i'm sometimes sympathetic and sometimes empathetic it's like seeing something sad makes me feel bad that's it it's not more complicated than that go away you know like i don't want to look at a homeless person it doesn't make me sad and uh i don't think that's a bad thing to do, but other people do, maybe. I don't know. 
Uh, you have coffee weed. I have C O U G H F Y coffee weed. It's just Y weed. <laughs> Uh, hook me up, fam. It's a plan. I'll hook you up, fam. You dig? It's a plan. Same sauce me some of that coffee weed, fam. You eat it to me. I want a thick rip. I fin a thick rip too. Do a plan. I see views like the Patriot has are pretty pessimistic and draws oneself and other towards views instead of contributing to positive solutions and optimism. Well, I mean, it depends how persistent it is. I agree with you that the pessimism or the negativity or whatever is a downer or something or boring or something. But to the extent that he's making making arguments that that engage the other party, then the end result of the discourse should be to promote what you're talking about anyway, Walter Wiseman, because it's not like it's not like gloom and doom is going to win the day. You think empathy is a spectrum and not a quantifiable amount. The Patriots, humans leave garbage all over the planet, even in the most remote places. Look up the Pacific Garbage Patch. I know about it. It's a testament to how bad humans are for this planet. Well, I mean, it's it's a testament to how messy we are, that's for sure. And yeah, we fucked up all kinds of shit. Consume, consume, consume. So what do you want to do? What's wrong with the consumption? That's not, look, this Pacific Garbage Patch, that's a problem. Litter, garbage all over the remote, most remote places, that's a problem. Consume, consume, consume is a separate issue entirely. You don't think it's good to consume, but... Um, you don't have to consume. Nobody's forcing you to consume. If you're saying consumption in general is bad, what you're really saying is, I don't like people making autonomous free choices for themselves because I don't like the choices they're making. I don't like the fact that those people think they need to buy something that I don't think they need. Of course, I'll buy what I think I need, but I don't think they need that. They shouldn't need that, according to my calculus. That is ignorance. What's ignorance? That is ignorance. You can call it pessimistic if you want. What is ignorant? The picture, are you the MGTOW guy with a new account? Rather focus on do it right or better than them and be a role model. This one helps. I mean, look, I, I wouldn't try to lecture the Patriot to try to be a role model or anything. I would just say, make better arguments. It's, you know, it's like, and have a point to the arguments. So let's say we can see that humans are all this messy, messy, messy. What's your point? Are you trying to advocate a change? Are you saying people ought to be different? Or do you have a specific advocacy you're advocating? Are you suggesting that we all share your views because they're more correct than ours? Or what? What are you doing with this argumentation? Patriot, okay. I don't agree there's a problem. There's always natural variation in temperatures. The effect of humans on the planet is vastly over -trade. Why do you think so-called climate change is a problem? Okay, well, I, I, I'm not saying it's necessarily a huge problem. I do agree that there's always been massive variations in temperatures across the planet over, over the course of the planet's history. Um, I don't think the effect of humans is vastly overplayed. Or portrayed, I think that it's definitely anthropogenic. I mean, there's just way too much evidence to show that the climate was changed not just with with the industrial revolution, but with the it, with the invention of farming. It, it basically minimized the next ice age, and it's been getting warmer ever since. This is not a recent phenomenon, but it is anthropogenic, which means man-made. Um, so, does that mean we have to do anything about it? No. Does that mean it's a terrible disaster and problem? Not necessarily. Does it mean things are going to change? Yeah. Do people hate change? 
Yeah. If animals were so worried about it, I'm sure they'd be attacking us in droves. And they should. Why are they doing their part? Well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Landco Man is the one responsible for protecting us from all those animal attacks. Landco Man is the equivalent of Aquaman, but for land. And uh, if it weren't for him continually calling all the animals back to him, we'd all be dead by now. Thank you, Landco Man. INFJs do not have very many limits with empathy. INFPs and ENFPs, I know, are also very empathetic. Hey, Eric, do you suggest I reposition my argument and negate evolution as the status quo and instead force my opponent to affirm it instead? If you can, I, I mean, I, I would definitely try to negate evolution. And it's, a pro, it's the appropriate way to do it. Evolution is not, it may be the status quo in the popular mind. Is that it's not clear enough about what it is. So, it, I mean... It, it, it's the status quo answer to the question where the species come from, evolution. But the reality is there's no actual meat to the They didn't explain what it is that they believe in and then negate it, ideally. If, though, they were switched and you had to be AF, then don't, uh, don't affirm a counter-advocacy. You say from a counter advocacy so if we're gonna if you're gonna make me be aft then the resolution has to be um i affirm evolution does not evolutionary science doesn't ex meaningfully explain the origin of the species i mean get the resolution down to a sentence that you can actually debate right that's a sentence that can be easily enough resolved through debate An evolutionary sentence does not or does meaningfully explain the origin of species on earth that's just a resolution you can debate the problem with what what i do a lot with evolution is there is no resolution there i'm explaining to people why the case that evolution is making doesn't hold water or provide us enough definitiveness to serve as an explanation for anything that's a whole different ball game than but normally people who are opposing evolution are doing so but, you know, there are a lot of creationists out there who are trying to argue against evolution because of their religious faith certainly that's not what i'm doing have you ever heard of a mirror neuron no jeff some reputable fox news scientist said that i'm sure I didn't pay him or anything, but I'm really trying to be a better empath. Why? Yeah, on the money, Eric. Thanks, Anetta. You're on the money, too. I think the general public has just been brainwashed to think evolution and climate change are the truth. I think climate change is the truth, but evolution is not. Um, you're right. I don't like it. I think people are just going to keep contributing to the disaster. I try my best to not destroy the planet. People should at least try not to ruin animal habitats. Well, I mean, I agree with you. I, I, I'd love to see places that are not currently developed, which by and large remain undeveloped. But that's not all my property, so I don't get to decide what happens to it. Don't do anything about it. How Taoist of you. Okay, well, you don't like it, and you're also building a lot of narratives about it, about the fact that you don't like it. So, our words are, are, are magic. And right now, in the wizard class, you keep hurting yourself with your spells. You're not they're 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 attack spells to shoot them at enemies or they just blow up on you and then you sustain all the damage remember that squirrel in ice age with all the acorns i love him he's really into acorns if human freedom comes at the expense of all other animals on the planet then i think it's bad for the world and i know many don't agree with me 
Well, of course it's bad for the world if human freedom comes at the expense of all other animals on the planet. But it's always going to be the case that um, species push each other out of the way, right? Any, any species that becomes highly successful is going to push a lot of other species out of the way. And it's unfortunate. And I think as moral agents, we ought to try to prioritize environmental preservation. And I think we ought to begin to treat animals as fellow sentient beings of some sort more and more. I think we should, by and large, stop eating them. I certainly don't oppose globalism or trade, though. That's insane. Um... Oh, LJ. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I kept keep trying to get to the end, and then a bunch more comments pop up. Yeah, I'm going to quit the shit pretty quick. I'm getting thirsty is the main reason why. You guys had to get a beverage. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to figure out empath. Did someone bring up mirror neurons? The empath couldn't take over because they relate to the people who fear control. Jack of all trades, master of none, and all that. Ha ha, well put, Eric. What type is victory at lol? Young. He's INFP. You're a lamb. To what extent have you considered your daughter an INFJ? Me? My daughter is... I don't think so. She's too extroverted. She's... I think... She, I'm quite confident she's either an ESTP or an ENTP. One of the two. She's an action type and she's a TI, uh, TI tool user. Now, 30 acres and coyotes have no problem ruining the rabbit habitat here. Yeah, those coyotes. It's not okay for coyote freedom at the expense of other animals. You need to go out there and police them, Sheila. You lock them all in cages right now to save the planet. Screw animals, we're the dominant species, and we dictate the outcome of those lesser than we are moral virtue. <laughs> well, that's just silly. That's just silly, Nero. You're not that much of a meanie. You wouldn't be the if you had to be the one clubbing all the baby seals, you wouldn't like it. Believe me, I've clubbed a lot of baby seals in my day. Where do you think I got all these baby seal clothes? It's not fun. It hurts for a little while. You feel it a couple of days later. You go, ah, that was really sad. But this coat is so warm. <laughs> okay, I don't know. Right <laughs> Good night, sweetheart, cause it's time to go. Boom, 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 boom. Good night, sweetheart. Mom, 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 mom. Yes, good night. Let the slumbers of nighttime fall upon your face like moonbeams from the sunshine. Indeed. Indeed. It's a slow goodbye. Very slow. You know why it's such a slow goodbye? Because I know I'm not going into the house so I finish the cigarette. That's why it's a slow goodbye. Plus, I don't take this opportunity to remind everybody, if you'd like to be typed by yours truly, it costs $100, 75 minute session. And I guarantee you give you my full ass, all my attention. It's well worth it. You'll enjoy it. If you don't want to buy that, that's fine. You can buy a t-shirt if you want they're not ready yet, though, so don't try to buy it quite yet. You have to wait a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so peace out. Rock and roll. Hang loose. Three fingers Joe, etc.